In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can detach viewport handles to provide a temporary reference point for transforms to be made around whilst leaving an object's pivot unaffected. I've got this set of control dials here and the pivot is in the center of each dial. And this is where the pivot ideally needs to be because the natural function of these dials is for them to all rotate around their own center point. So say that we're laying these out in a scene to create some kind of control panel. And I've got a reference image loaded in my composite view, which I can just switch to by clicking on the composite view tab. And let's say that this is the kind of scene that we're building. And I want to lay out the dials which are currently in my scene to be something like this area of this reference image here, where these control knobs are positioned along an arc, which is a constant radius from this main switch. So I'll switch back to my scene view and let's say that all these knobs are going to be at a radius of 0.3 units from this main control switch like this one is here. Based on what we looked at in the last lesson, we know that we could move the pivot to be in the center of this main switch and rotate this control knob around that point to position it. But rather than moving the pivot to be able to rotate this smaller control knob around this main switch, I can simply detach the viewport handle and move it to a new position to provide a temporary reference point for that transform to be made around. To detach a handle, we can just tap the apostrophe key and you can see at the bottom of the viewport, we get a notification letting us know that the handle has been detached from the geometry. Tapping the apostrophe key again will reattach the handle to the geometry. The other way that we can detach a handle is to right click over the handle and uncheck this attach to geometry option. Once the handles have been detached from the geometry, they change in appearance to more of a wireframe look. This rotation handle, once we detach it, also gets some move handles so that we can move the rotation handle to another position. And you can see that the arrow tips and these little cubes where the rotation handles intersect are displayed in a wireframe mode. So let's move this handle to the center point of this main control switch. And I know that this switch is positioned right at the center of the world, so I can use grid snapping to snap the pivot to the world center. I can activate grid snapping by clicking on this grid snap button in the left hand toolbar, or if I tap the X key whilst hovering the cursor over the viewport, that brings up the snap radial menu, and I can select grid snapping from here, and now I can snap to any of these grid points. So I'll snap the handle to the grid point at the world origin, and now I can tap the apostrophe key to reattach the handle to the geometry. And now I can rotate the smaller control knob around this main switch to wherever I want to position it. Now, when I deselect and reselect the dial, the handle gets reset back to match the pivot alignment. When we detach and reposition or realign the move, rotate or scale handles, it's only a temporary reposition. As soon as we deselect and reselect the object, the handle snap back to the object's pivot position. The default behavior of the handle tool is different though. The handle tool will maintain its position until you reposition it. So in this situation, using the handle tool could be beneficial. Let's take this next control knob and move it to be 0.3 units away from the main switch. And now I'll switch to the handle tool by tapping the enter key and I'll detach the handle by tapping the apostrophe key. I'll move the handle to the center of the main switch and then I'll tap the apostrophe key again to reattach the handle to the geometry. Now I can rotate the control knob around this main switch in exactly the same way as we did using the rotate tool. But the difference this time using the handle tool is that now if I deselect and reselect this object, the handle tool has retained the position I moved it to at the world origin. This means that I can just switch between the handle tool and the rotate tool to be able to quickly switch between rotating this knob around the main control switch to rotating it around its local Y axis without having to reposition any handles. In fact, rather than having to switch between the handle tool and the rotate tool, I can say click on the handle of the handle tool and choose to make this persistent. And now when I switch to the rotate tool, the handle tool remains active and I can adjust both rotations without having to switch between tools. Another advantage of maintaining the pivot position at the base of the object is that you can quickly snap the handle back to that point. So let's switch back to the handle tool by tapping the enter key. And as we can see, the handle is still at the world origin. If I tap the insert key to enter pivot mode for this object, we can see the pivot position is still at the dead center of the object. And we can also see in the parameters for this object that the pivot translation and rotation values are all still at zero. And zero in the case of the pivot means center of the object, not center of the world. I'll exit the pivot mode by tapping the insert key. And now if I want to quickly snap this handle back to the pivot position, I can just right click on the handle and choose snap to pivot and we can see the handle snap back to that position. 
Under the same right click menu, we also have the option to snap handles to the centroid. At the moment, the pivot is currently right at the centroid of this object. But if we just move the pivot down by tapping the insert key and moving it down in the Y axis and then tapping the insert key again to exit the pivot mode. Now, if we right click and say snap the handle to the pivot, it will move to the pivot. Or if we right click and choose snap to centroid, it will move to the very center of the object. So far, we've only moved the handles, but we can also set a different alignment for a handle by rotating it. So we can detach a handle from the geometry by tapping the apostrophe key and then simply rotate it using the viewport handles. Or if we want to enter a specific angle for the handle rotation, then we can right click on the handle and go to handle parameters. And here we can enter a specific rotation value. So for example, if we wanted to be able to move this object along an axis of 45 degrees relative to the world, then we can just enter that value in the handle parameters here. We can also enter a specific position in world space for that handle as well if we wanted. So for example, if we wanted to set it back to the world origin, rather than moving it in the viewport, we could just enter 0, 0, 0 into the handle translate parameter fields here. So in the last lesson, we saw how we can adjust an object's pivot. And in this lesson, we've seen how we can detach and adjust the handles. And in both cases, we've seen that these can be used to control how transformations will affect an object, which raises a question of when should we use the pivot versus detaching and moving a handle. A simple rule of thumb would be to think of the pivot as the permanent pivot point of an object. And so the point that you want your transform handles to default to. And to think of the handle detachment as a way of creating a temporary reference point to make a transformation around. The pivot is the point around which transformations will occur when animating an object's transform parameters. So for rigging and animation work, you'd want to be working with a pivot. But for general modeling and scene layout tasks, I'd suggest detaching and moving handles to create temporary reference points for transformations as you work, rather than trying to continually adjust an object's pivot.